Howdy. So I watched The Expendables yesterday, and I'm going to give it a 5. Uh, for a while, I thought I was going to give it a 6, but then the movie just kept on going. Um, it's about... Uh, Bruce Willis wants to get rid of a organization that is controlling a country. I guess he wants to overthrow a government, really. And so he hires uh, Sylvester Stallone to take out this government. And the people funding the government and funding the movement and what have you. So lots of uh, loud noises ensue. It, uh, it's got a big cast, a quite famous cast, a action star packed cast. Uh, it's got Sylvester Stallone. Uh, Stallone also directed and co-wrote the film. Uh, it's got Jason Statham, or is it Jonathan? Uh, no one else's name is on the box other than Stallone. Uh, I think it's Jason Statham. I'm not. Uh, it could be Jonathan. Anyway, Jason Jason Statham character is like the you know S Stallone is the old guard and Statham is the new guard, and his character seems to. That's my main issue with this movie is you've got way too many people in it. Uh, enough that it minimizes characters down to one note and really even one scene. Uh, Statham's character, I thought, at times seems equally important to Stallone's and then at other times inexplicably means nothing and has no you know, importance in the film, so I thought that was very uneven. Uh, Jet Li is in it. Uh, Randy Couture is in it. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin is in it. Terry Crews is in it for some reason. I don't even associate Terry Crews with uh, action pictures. He's just uh, a big black guy who is in shape um, and muscularly so. Uh, I know him as a comedian more than anything. Uh, so he's here just because he has muscles, as far as I'm concerned, and maybe he provides comic relief at one point. I never laughed uh, at him. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke is there to handle the acting. Any acting that goes on in this movie is handled by Mickey Rourke. Uh... <laughs> It's, I mean, it's like obvious. He's the only person who has to hit multiple notes in one scene. So, I mean, literally. Uh, Mickey Rourke handles the acting in this movie. Uh, Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger are in it. And that's honestly probably the reason you should watch this movie, if you're going to watch it, is uh, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, and Arnold Schwarzenegger the undisputed kings of 80s action have a scene together, and it is delightful. Uh, for me, growing up on mindless 80s action, it was very heartwarming to see these three guys finally on the, uh, on the screen together. The Planet Hollywood crew, now on film together. Uh, and it was almost pretty much worth the price of admission. I mean, if it weren't for that scene, I might give the movie a four. So, for like a three or five minute scene, I'll, I'll you know, bump it up to five because it was fun and it made me smile. Uh, and I enjoyed watching them work together. Uh, so there was that. Uh, by far my favorite part of the film, and I saved his name for last, was Dolph Lundgren. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, I thought, was hilarious in this movie. Uh, I thought he had the best fight scenes. I thought he had the funniest lines. Um, I thought, 
I mean, I can't say that he had the best character because they're all really kind of the same, but again, I really enjoyed Dolph Lundgren in this movie. He made me laugh in every scene and because he was supposed to, and it wasn't unintentionally. Um, Dolph Lundgren, highlight of the film. Uh, the movie got worse for me. It's like they ran out of story to tell and just tried to make things explode and uh, it's like they had to keep talking. Well, that explosion was pretty loud, so the next thing we have to have explode has to be even louder. So I almost thought to myself they should call it the explosions. <laughs> uh, but the violence was fun. I mean, you're not going to watch this movie for any mental, you know, or spiritual awakening. Uh, you're going to watch this movie for cartoonish action violence. And it does deliver. Uh, sometimes pointlessly so, but it does deliver. Uh, the, and the action scenes are, again, everything seems to fall apart at the end. Uh, the action is better at the beginning than it is at the end. Um, everything is better at the beginning than it is at the end. Uh, and, the, and the action is, is very cartoonish. I have to keep on going back to uh, Punisher 2 Warzone. If you've never seen Punisher 2 Warzone and like the Expendables rocks your boat uh, or floats your boat, I should say, you need to see Punisher 2 because that was the first movie I'd seen where they take violence to a another level and I think that's what the Expendables wanted to do and mostly succeeded but they were trying to be what I saw in Punisher 2 so if you were an Expendables fan go rent that and I think that Punisher 2 pulled off what Expendables wanted to do a lot better uh, one thing that made me mad is Terry Crews, who I mentioned before, well, first of all, all the characters seem to come in and out for no apparent reason. Like, and you never care, but like a character shows up and then is gone for 45 minutes and then comes back for five minutes. Uh, Terry Crews, as far as I can tell, his character is only in the movie to do one thing, and that's fire a shotgun at a specific time. I, I, I see no other reason for his character. I see no other reason for a lot of the characters in this movie. Uh, I think that the cast could have been trimmed down um, a lot just for streamlining the story, but the problem is there's not much story there. Uh, so it would have been like a 40 minute movie. Um, I, again, I, I feel it's kind of pointless to sit here and analyze or talk about the Expendables because it's just supposed to be mindless fun and it does succeed at that mostly though even though I'm a mindless fun kind of guy I did find myself getting bored with the last 20 minutes where it was just nothing but noise you know just loud uh, I, I all, almost thought my neighbor was gonna come and tell me to turn it down just because there was nothing but and bass and firing guns so it just really loses it unravels at the end uh, <clears throat> I don't know what else to say about it I mean it's a five if you want to see the Expendables you're gonna see the Expendables and you're probably gonna enjoy it uh, I in a way I'm kinda of mad that I didn't see it on the big screen because I would much rather have seen it on the big screen and never seen it again and just know that I've experienced it. But I did have a lot of fun with the screen. Uh, oh, I can't think of the word. Debut of the of the three titans of 80s action. I mean, to me, again, worth the price of admission to see that scene. Uh, really enjoyed it. The violence was was okay. Uh, but again, a lot of pointless characters, uh, 
and pointless noise. Uh, so that's the Expendables. I don't know what else to say about it, other than it's a five. And if you want to check it out, check it out. You know right now whether or not you'll like it. So that's the Expendables. Uh, and, and after you see this, if you halfway enjoyed it, rent Punisher 2, uh, Warzone, because it, uh, I, <laughs> I'd seriously, in terms of cartoonish violence, I don't think I'd ever seen a movie like that until Punisher 2. And that's exactly what Expendables is wanting to be. Uh, I mean, to me, the cover even looks the same. So, <clears throat> there you go, that's the Expendables. Thanks.